The man who fought for 10 days, divided opinion, but finally a judge ruled against him. The orders of the court are, one, the amended application be dismissed with costs, such costs to be agreed or failing agreement assessed, two, reasons to be published at a later date. Those are the orders of court. Novak Djokovic booted out of Australia 24 hours ago, and there is real anger. It's not Novak that is humiliated. Australian authorities humiliated themselves. Uh, Ten days of torturing him, and uh, after all, the terrible media campaign that was launched by them and by many others in the West was really something very terrible, and we, we wait for our Novak. That's President Vucic of Serbia clearly angry of all the upside-down decisions we've seen in the last couple of years. This is one of the most disturbing details to come. And while all of this was going on back home, the government were busy sowing the seeds for the final demise of this. Sharon, is it done? If you want him dead, you're going to have to do it yourself. This is the best samba I have seen. Great. Welcome to a very special Friday One Show because tonight we're using the power of musicals to lift everyone's spirit. It's your BBC Bonanza, of course. The Culture Secretary says the TV licence will be axed in 2028. What does that mean? What replaces it? Is it the end of the BBC? And if it is, would you support that? Uh, also, the TV chef and baking Baroness Prue Leith has said that at some point she fully expects to become a victim of, quote, ridiculous cancel culture. We'll look at that. The Beano is also in the frame for similar reasons. And this... And all I ask is that Sue Gray be allowed to complete her inquiry into that day and several others so that the full facts can be established. And I would, of course, come back to this House and make a statement. While that inquiry is underway, the PM has now spoken to Sue Gray, trying to get his government back on track now, of course. But has the horse already bolted? Is there anything the Prime Minister can do to restore your faith? Details with Peter Cargwell, our political editor, coming later. Everything you need to know, all the breaking news, right here on Salt Radio, 0344 499 1000. Ian Collins. Ian Collins on Talk Radio. It's a straightforward question. Do you stand with Djokovic or Australia? 0344 499 1000. The last couple of years, it's fair to say, has thrown up some imponderables. To use that now well-worn phrase, we've lived through unprecedented times. The pandemic has meant that our lives have changed beyond anything we could have imagined. And along with that, rules and laws have changed too. Some of it understandable, quite a lot of it absolutely unfathomable. We've seen some laughable and also despicable overreactions in the last 22 months. The police nicking people for out having a cup of tea in the park. Countries like Austria and Greece imposing rules and diktats that are so vastly disproportionate that no sane person could ever give them the nod. Police using rubber bullets. Government ministers across the world proudly proclaiming your life is over if you don't take some medicine. Sick pay being cut. Doctors threatened with losing their jobs. And that doesn't include, of course, the wider job market as well. Business is desecrated. Hospital waiting list through the roof and non-COVID deaths at home in excess of anything we've seen for many years. The final report on this sorry period will have some serious questions to try to answer. But curiously, for me, it's not actually any of that that I've found myself wrestling with over the last 24 hours. It's this man. Well, first of all, it's great to be back uh, in this arena that... Uh it has a very special place in my heart. I mean, this has been uh, by far my most successful court in, in, in my career and uh, loved coming back to Australia, the land of tennis. Yeah, well, not any longer. How interesting is that, listening to his words back? How times have changed. The world's number one tennis player, Novak Djokovic, yesterday booted out of Australia despite a battle from his lawyers, arguments between the state and federal governments, dividing the room not just across Australia but the wider world. It came to an end yesterday morning. Djokovic will not be taking part in the US Open. The world of tennis just lost its bigger player for that particular tournament. But my point isn't specifically about the world of sport. What happened in Oz yesterday was one of the most disturbing aspects that I think I've seen in the last two years. And there's a big old list there. Watching 
His plane takeoff yesterday was one of the most troubling and unsettling sights. I know it doesn't sound like the biggest headline, but there was something profound and disconcerting about all of the optics and the imagery here. Watching a man leave his hotel, head for Melbourne Airport, seeing those images of him being ferried to the terminal, stepping onto an aeroplane, and then that aeroplane taking off. That was haunting for me. There was something about just the clinical nature of all of this that was discomforting. One of the fittest men on the planet, a top athlete, law-abiding citizen, deported like a serial killer or a rapist because he didn't have a vaccination. A man who doesn't have COVID, kicked out of the land down under for having the temerity to take charge of his own body. If you're not disturbed by that scenario, there is something wrong with you. Even if you are a vaccination evangelist, surely that was the point that you would realise something is very wrong. Something has gone wrong with the way laws are made. There's a dirty big flaw in the rule book. Surely you would have to come up with that conclusion regardless that having this one size fits all law falls at the first hurdle when you look at a case such as this. Again, this probably doesn't compare in some respects to the many other overreactions, but there's something striking about this. Go home, you filthy unvax Serb, chocked the Aussie government. You ain't welcome round here. That's disturbing, right? At any level, whoever you are, whatever your take, whatever your position, that is disturbing. A perfectly fit man without COVID has been sent on an aeroplane home, deported from a country which in theory he can't revisit for another three years. According to some, by the way, he was actually not deported for being unvaxxed. Apparently the immigration minister conceded the tennis star had a valid exception. It is said that Alex Hawke deported Djokovic because he deemed his presence in the country a threat to spreading dissent. What? Where are we on this? A threat to spreading dissent. Aussies will eventually look back in shame at this. Dissent in a country where most people are vaccinated, I should add. It was interesting to see some of the good and the great, and the view is mixed on this. Uh, Mia Farrow, of course, who's the ex-wife of child botherer Woody Allen. I, I say that because many people won't be familiar with who Mia Farrow is. She wrote, Novak Djokovic is a great tennis player, but he lied. And worse, he knowingly exposed people to COVID. I've had it with him and every other arrogant, entitled person. They're all dangerous in one way or another. Piers Morgan, now of this parish, sir, parish says, COVID rule cheat, immigration form liar and anti-vaxxer icon Novak Djokovic loses his appeal against deportation and will be thrown out of Australia without being able to compete in the Australian Open. Good, says Piers. By the way, the Australian Open is now underway, isn't it? As of today, he would have been playing today, interestingly, but he ain't. He's sitting at home now, twiddling his thumbs, wondering when he'll next be able to play tennis anywhere at all. Because, of course, this is going to come back and haunt him. We now know that it's unlikely that he will be able to play in the French Open. How is that going to happen? Because in France, if you ain't got two jabs, you ain't coming in. And even if you found yourself with some kind of way of getting in, you can't do anything. When you're there, every venue would require you to uh, have a double vaccination and throw the uh, and show the uh, PR code, the QR code uh, accordingly. The French sports minister has made the point defending the idea of bubbles for unvaccinated athletes, but on Sunday reversed that position after the passing of stricter measures in the French parliament, putting Djokovic's defence of his French Open title in danger. I mean, there's a, a real danger here for Djokovic. He's never going to play tennis again other than in Wimbledon. Well, we've been a bit more realistic about it. This is going to apply to your holidays, by the way, if you can't, you know, if you want to go to France for a holiday. If you've decided not to have a vaccination, you ain't going anywhere at the moment. These are they're not conspiracy theories. They're just stupid overreactions. We've got it in many other countries. And at the moment, if you are someone who sits in a profession that requires you to be in those countries, like a top tier sports person, you are royally stuffed. So let me just ask you, do you, I read out a couple of dissenting uh, emails there or tweets there 
from people who don't have a defensive position of Novak Djokovic. You think he is a rule breaker, an anti-vaxxer and an all round moron in that respect. But I cannot I can't rid the taking all of that into account. There's just something barbarically sinister about sending home the world's top athlete onto an aeroplane. Sorry, your, your papers don't match, Novak. You're a filthy, unvaccinated being. Get on that plane and go. Uh, the police will accompany you to the airport and make sure you board that plane. And then watching that plane take off yonder, I think it stopped in uh, the UAE to, uh, to begin with Saudi, perhaps somewhere like that. Uh, and then on to Belgrade, where his journey will have finished. He's not there to defend his title. Australia as a tennis tournament will be poorer because of the lack of his presence. And this will be seen around the world. He's arguably the only one of his stature uh, that is suffering this problem. I think there was talk of another tennis player that we'd never heard of. Not that that's any consolation to them, but that's where we are. So I have to throw this question out. I was so appalled watching that imagery unfold yesterday the clinical sinister nature of the Australian machine. And do you know what? If somebody had said to you two years ago, right, there's going to be a pandemic. How do you think different countries will deal with it? How will Australia deal with it? Your guess, your guess about how Australia might have dealt with COVID would have been something like, nah, mate, don't give a stuff. Go and have another beer, throw a shrimp on the barbie and just get on with it. That's how you would have imagined Australia would have been. Instead, they've been one of the fiercest, most despot-like nations on the planet for a country, by the way, that hasn't really been particularly hard hit with COVID. Just to hammer home the thumping irony of the piece. Do you stand with Djokovic or do you stand with Australia? 0344 499 1000. Good talk. Hot talk. Bold talk. Talk radio. Listen on.